gerade noch mit diesen schönen Sitzmöbeln auseinandersetzt, hat mir, und das kann ich sagen, er, er war so ein bisschen aufgeregt, das wird er nie selber sagen, deswegen bin ich ja da, ähm, weil er ihn großartig findet. Und ich würde sagen, jetzt ist er, ist er schon da, Johnny? Wollt ihr schon loslegen? Großartig. Graham Linnen und Johnny Häuser, Applaus bitte. Ist das so? Uh, first of all, welcome to Berlin. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have you been here before? Uh, once before, I was here 22 years ago to interview the Pixies. Uh, all right. Yeah. Also, we're going to do this in English the whole time. I'm not going to translate yes, everything. Yes, sorry. Aber ich war vor 22 Jahren hier, um die Pixies zu interviewen. So I don't mind if you translate. Um, it, can't be, it can't be any more awkward than a lot of the interviews going on. Well, I do, because then it's even <laughs> harder for me. So, no, we're okay. just talking English and then somebody... We crowd crowdsource the translation okay. afterwards, okay? okay? People do that nowadays on the internet. Um, I brought some short clips, okay. which we can look at. Um, who has seen the IT crowd? Who knows? Oh, okay, that's enough oh, for you. That's okay, good. okay, Thank okay, you. okay, okay. Who has seen Black Books? Okay. Goodness. Black Books is, um, was done before IT crowd? Yep. And it's about a bookstore. Uh, yeah, that's and it's about nerds as well in some way. I guess, I guess, yeah. It's about men, which is kind of the same thing. <laughs> and before that, there was Father Ted. Yes, yeah. also about men. It's true. <laughs> Has wer hat Father like Ted that. gesehen? So the least, yeah. That that would be the opposite in anywhere else. But Father Ted is probably my my best known in the UK and Ireland. When was that done, exactly? When was Father Ted done? Yes. I think it was done in uh, 1992, 93, something like that. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> okay, good. So, let's get back to Berlin for, for a second. You interviewed the Pixies 22 yeah. years ago. What for? For a magazine? Or? Yeah, I used to write for a music magazine uh, called Select. And before that, I wrote for an Irish music magazine called Hot Press. It's where I started off was uh, film criticism and music criticism and, um, you know, yeah, that was it. So is that your musical background as well? Uh, yeah, yeah, a musical background insofar as I listen to music. <laughs> I've, never, I've never produced it or, or done No, any. but I mean, like, uh, all the bands like the Pixies, Alternative Rock. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's always been that kind of thing, I guess. So you what know. was your first gig then that you went to? My first gig ever? Yeah. It was actually Bruce Springsteen. That's not too alternative, yeah, but... <laughs> in Slane Castle when I was 16. I wasn't allowed to go to gigs before that. So uh, my first gig was this huge, um, this huge kind of stadium type event. And uh, I thought, oh, I'll go near the front. So then I'll get a better view. <laughs> and the gig started and I was nearly killed. I literally had to swim back through people. My feet weren't touching the ground. I was, I was swimming back to get, to get away from the crush. So That's what that they call crowd first. surfing these days. Yeah, yeah. And it was involuntary can, crowd surfing. If you could all maybe stand here in the front, we can try <laughs> if it still works. That's how I can get home. But let's have a look at... You have seen the German version of IT Crowd, I guess. I have. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ach komm, die Synchronisation ist nicht so schlimm. Uh, für die, die es noch nicht gesehen haben, I stole those videos from YouTube. Okay. I just downloaded them. That's fine. I remember that when the lawyers come. So the quality isn't perfect, but I didn't know how to rip the DVD. Um, This is the first thing you're going to show of my work, is the German IT crowd. This is the German version, <laughs> but it's only the, uh, it's the, the intro, which, you know, okay. and it's the anti-piracy video. So everybody knows what we're talking about. I have that, no idea how good that translation is. The translation is pretty okay. Um, 
that anti-piracy video was pretty close to the one that uh, they showed in the UK, actually. Yeah, yeah, it's more or less, except without the, the murder at the end. Apart from that, it's, it's more or less shot for shot. So there's a, there's a lot of artists uh, like you and, and, and screenwriters who probably wouldn't agree with you to make fun of it, but uh, who... Well, it's, you know, it, it's just the way it's been done so far has been so heavy-handed and black and white and, and ignorant of, of what's happening in the wider world. And, um, you know, I, I just find it... A f I've always found it offensive that they're trying to criminalize teenagers for doing something that they, they just don't see any harm in. I, 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 I just think it's, uh, uh, you know, there's, it, it's one of those issues where the truth and the reality is very much in, in the middle of the two extremes, you know. I, I think artists should be paid for their work, but I also think uh, sometimes corporations make it hard for artists to be paid. Um, and there's all these, you know, ridiculous um, marketing techniques used to, like the, the thing of not being able to see uh, a, your favorite show for nine months after some, everyone else has seen it, all these silly things. And I don't know, I just, it, it's tiresome. When you turned up, yeah, it is. Um, and I had to go turn to YouTube to find those small clips. I mean, yeah. I would have easily paid a euro, two, three, if, uh, to have it in a good quality for here, but it mm -hmm. didn't work. Um, when you came up with the idea for IT Crowd, how hard was it to sell it? I mean, it's, um, it's not the most commercial sounding idea to do a comedy sitcom about an IT department with lots of in-jokes about computer people. Well, that's the thing, there, there actually are, well, I, I tried to, uh, I think the first series there were a few more in-jokes, uh, but then I, I, I never really wanted it to be, I wanted it to be, um, I wanted the people who was about to enjoy it maybe a little bit more than, the, than everyone else, but, but I certainly didn't want them to uh, be the only people enjoying it, you know. I try and write comedy that, that gets as many people in as possible. Um, I try not to exclude people. So I couldn't do jokes about the difference between Linux and um, Windows and stuff like that. I had to, uh, I had to, uh, in fact, I'm not even sure there is a difference. And <coughs> I would um, be very nervous about entering into that area anyway because I know so little about it, you know. But do you know so much about it for the end jokes that are there? I mean... I, I know just enough. Okay. I know just enough to make slightly ignorant jokes that don't uh, insult everybody. I did do a joke once that I've been corrected a lot on where someone... I can't remember how the line goes exactly, but they say, uh, you know, I don't, uh, I don't care about all this memory and RAM stuff. And Moss goes, memory is RAM! And uh, I've been corrected about that, and I still do not understand what I did wrong. <laughs> um, I have a picture of, of um, the, the setting, which is a very large picture. <coughs> Maybe we can... Slight, I'm reading this back now. Slightly ignorant jokes that don't insult everybody. That's the set. Basically, yeah. I don't know which, uh, which um, series is what it was. Do you know? That's what it always looks like, really. It, it, it's, I described it when we were doing it as a kind of living set. I wanted um, people to, to add to it. I asked people... Uh, I used to have a blog. I still do, but I don't update it very often. And I would ask people to send in you know, things they just want to be on the set, uh, especially people who uh, created comics and, and art and uh, board games. I just wanted it to look like the kind of place that I would like to work, you know. So what does your place look like then? Similar? It is kind yeah. of similar, yeah. yeah. Um, there's an anonymous mask as well. Um, yeah, I, I, that's definitely third series then. Yeah, I, I, I thought we had to represent them somehow. There's a few, there, there are in-jokes everywhere, and all the stuff behind Moss's desk comes from the computer 
um, museum in the UK, which gave us some very rare stuff. Apparently, there's some, there's some real collectibles in there. Um, yeah. So did you, um, there's also a cult about all the t-shirts uh, that Roy wears. Yeah. Roy, I think, you know, he wears different t-shirts every time, geek t-shirts, nerd t-shirts. Mm -hmm. There's been a tumble blog just you know, taking pictures of all the different shirts he has. Then people started selling them, just those t-shirts. I think they were, well, I would find them from blogs and stuff, so I think they were on sale beforehand. We didn't make them up. They were, they were, I mean, they were uh, t-shirts about being, uh, it was a way of, it was a lazy way of showing his character because they were t-shirts that, um, uh, you know, my favorite one is two uh, circular Venn diagrams, one that says music I used to like, no, music I like, music you like, and where it intersects it says music I used to like. And I thought that that kind of arrogance and, um, uh, slightly bitter, contemptuous attitude was was good for Roy. So I'd, I'd use T-shirts to tell people who he was. It, it, I wouldn't recommend doing that. It's a very lazy way of doing things. But it worked. It, it kind of did. I think Chris and uh, I think Chris would have appreciated it more if I'd uh, written his character into what he did. Um, I, but the first series, I still didn't quite know who Roy was and. Uh, I was struggling a little bit to, to... It was the first thing I'd done on my own, and I was still learning a lot. And, um, you know, I struggled in the first series to, to show who Roy was. We, 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 we kept falling between that thing of, you know, Chris is obviously a very good-looking guy, and Roy is supposed to be a very bitter, uh, somewhat misogynist, um, uh, uh, you know, an unpleasant guy in many ways. But, but Chris is so likable that uh, we ended up somewhere a little bit more towards him, and it was, it was interesting. It, was, it just it became a, a third character. But I like that, because I, I think Elvis Costello said the history of rock music is people trying to copy other people and getting it slightly wrong. And, and that's what I was doing. I was trying to create one character, and then Chris came in and turned him into someone else, and, um, and it worked out. It worked out for us. So the input of the actors is... Um, the which? The input of the actors. Oh, it's huge. They're like the co-writers in the last week. That, that's why with the German version and the American version, uh, you know, the, the, the biggest mistake they made was thinking that the scripts that we ended up with, um, you know, I mean, the reason they existed was because in the last week we do so much work on it. Because we, 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 we start rehearsing on a Monday and we show it to the audience on Friday and we're all so terrified that we're not going to get laughs. We really work those scripts. And uh, Richard and Chris are such funny people. And Matt and Catherine. They're all so funny that, you know, the, just, just kind of the natural week of rehearsing would lead to about 25, 30% new jokes. So, um, yeah, they're kind of... I wouldn't give them a credit, because then I might have to pay them more, but, but uh, they certainly contribute a lot. So what, uh, what, is, what is the story be, uh, behind Richmond? The character, which I really loved, but then he kind of faded away. Yeah, I didn't know what to do with him, okay. really. Um, and also, Noel got very famous in the UK um, and couldn't really... Uh, join in as much as, uh, as we'd like. But also, I, I kind of missed the target a little bit with Richmond. I made him a... I think, a, I think he's a Cradle of Filth fan, and I, I think that was wrong. I was, again, I was kind of, uh, you know, uh, being a bit ignorant there. He should have been into someone. That was the wrong band. And I, I don't know. I like Noel a lot. I think, again, again, Noel coming on board and, and giving his reading of the character changed him again and made him into something... Well, I, I didn't really know what he was by the end of it. So, uh, so, yeah, it was slightly difficult to write for Richmond, so I just decided to stop. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, you'll have some time to drink. I'll have some time for another clip. I, that, I've done it. Which is... Um, Probably the most 
linked part of IT Crowd. Whenever somebody twitters something and he gets, he's getting a reply with a clip from IT Crowd, this is what comes up, uh, what comes up very often. That's my impression. We could actually just watch it all the time. <laughs> I don't know what would be worse. And of course, we thought about having the internet here, but then we thought it was a stupid idea. <laughs> um, there's something that I personally find very remarkably, re re remarkable about your kind of humor, which is that you seem to get along without using too many below-the-belt jokes and without using curse words. Uh, well, funnily enough, in that, I think it was that series, uh, I just set myself a challenge to do it without uh, cursing. Uh, we did, in the, in the second series, we did a curse joke. It's one of my favorite curse, curses ever. It's, uh, uh, you know, Moss is kneeling down in front of Douglas, um, and it looks from a certain angle that he's, he's uh, performing oral sex on him. And meanwhile, outside the door are the representatives of all major religions on a tour. <laughs> and they open the door, and Douglas turns around and sees them and goes, fuck off. And uh, it, because it, Matt Berry doing it was one thing, um, but it, it makes me laugh more than nearly anything I've, I've written. I find it just incredibly funny. Um, and there was something about the power of it also frightened me a little bit because I realized I could be going for that kind of laugh all the time. And while, and while it was, a, uh, I'm, you know, while I'm very happy with the joke, um, I wouldn't like to lean on it too much. It's uh, too easy. Um, you know, there's some shows that do it really well um, and it's absolutely appropriate. Larry Sanders is, is probably, you know, my, in my top three of favorite shows of all time and that uses it you know, brilliantly, but uh, I don't know, it, it just didn't seem entirely necessary, and I thought, well, if it's not entirely necessary, I wonder if I could, I wonder if I could go without doing it for a whole series, and, and, and I did, so, it, you know, no one noticed, you know, except me. Um, when I when looked up interviews with you to get a feel for what you're talking about, what you enjoy talking about, there was a speech that you gave, five or ten minutes, and that was about you saying censorship is good. Sort of. It's not so much censorship, it's more restrictions. Mm -hmm. Restrictions are good, some, sometimes. The story I always tell is cigarette advertising in the 70s in the UK. Um, before the 70s, um, you, you know, if you wanted to advertise cigarettes, you just saw someone taking it out of the packet, light, lighting it and smoking it, and going, ah. And that was how you advertise cigarettes. And then suddenly that was um, banned in the 70s. And, and because of this restriction, uh, advertising went through a kind of golden age where um, all these, uh, all these um, advertising companies had to become more and more um, creative in finding a way to advertise a product that they weren't allowed to show, you know? And so, you know, you had some very strange, very interesting, fun ads for a while. And so, so yeah, sometimes restrictions are good. It's the same with, you know, with, you know poetry, the, the, the specific um, requirements of each different type of poetry bring out different um, techniques and different uh, disciplines and, and different sensations. And, um, and so, yeah, sometimes I like to... And if you look at an episode, to take a sitcom example, the episode of Seinfeld, the Chinese restaurant, which is all set within, it's like half an hour of them waiting for it to get a seat at a Chinese restaurant. And you never leave that set. You never leave the, um, uh, you never leave the waiting area. And they're able to do just one of the all-time classic episodes out of it. Um, so yeah, it's sometimes, one of the hardest things is uh, the blank page uh, when you're a writer. So if you, if you set yourself an artificial um, piece of, an artificial restriction, 
then you can often, it, you know, that'll often actually help you write. Yeah, I was wondering if the uh, if your own restriction, your artificial restriction, would be to use not too many curse words. Yeah, and that was one, you know, um, and there's there was a, you know, there. I'm trying to think of another one. Um, yeah, well, one of the one of the um, one of the ones we had on Father Ted, which was about three priests, three Catholic priests who've all been exiled to a um, island off the coast of Ireland for various crimes um, by the Catholic Church. Uh, there, one of the rules we set ourselves was you would never see them working, you'd never see them doing confession or, you know, saying mass or anything like that. And, um, and that rule uh, just led to it immediately feeling different to other ecclesiastical sitcoms because the first thing that someone would do if it was uh, a sitcom usually starring a priest is you'd show them in confession, hearing a naughty confession, and that would be hilarious. And we didn't want to do that. We wanted to, um, we wanted to show them in their downtime. Uh, we wanted to show what they did when they were re relaxing because we thought that would be a funnier. And so, you know, because of this restriction we, we put on ourselves, there was a joke where we, we had, a, we had a, a scene where these nuns had come to see mass and um, Ted had to do it, but he was in a hurry. And we thought, well, how will we show him doing mass? We can't show him. We, our rule is you don't see him doing mass. So what we did was he runs out through a door and the door starts closing and we hear on the inside the mask going, blah, 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 blah. and before the door shuts, he slams out back through into the room again. And that, was, and that was like a joke that wouldn't have existed if we had gone in through the door and, and, and shown what we promised not to show. So restriction can be good. Restriction can be good. Is there, um, you are a social media connected person, you told about your blog, you're very active on Twitter. Um, was that by, did you choose that as a creative person or did that just happen? Uh, yeah, no, Twitter chose me. Uh, you know, when you're sitting on your own, writing every day, and then suddenly, you know, there's, there's this window, and you open the window, and there are thousands, millions of people out there, and you can talk to them, and they can talk to you. I mean, that's what every writer has, has, has dreamed of, although at the same time, it's a huge uh, productivity killer. I was going to say, <laughs> I mean, I, I know some writers who hate it, because it's um, it distracts them too much. Yeah, you do have to be careful. I think, I'm hoping that I've gone through that period where the novelty of it was so extraordinary that, that I would just spend all day on it. Now I think there's part of me that realizes, you know, Twitter will go on whether I'm there or not. I don't, I don't have to hear every news report or, 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 you know, see what new game is being released or whatever. Uh, I, I, I think I can control it a bit more, but it is like it is like heroin or something. And you did uh, as well. You did a Twitter experiment once where you uh, the bad movie club. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, we just you know that was just a very early, obvious thing to do. Really, just everyone watched uh, the film The Happening with Mark Wahlberg at the same time and. Uh, and we tweeted about it. It wasn't, it wasn't, I, I, was, just, I was just curious to see what, what it would be like. In the end, it, it was it, it really hard. I didn't enjoy it. It was, uh, it was too frenetic. And I felt, <clears throat> I mean, I love it when, when, when Twitter really comes into its own when it's something like um, the Eurovision Song Contest or something like that, something that's, uh, that just happens to be on. And you casually sit down and join the conversation. But when you're when you when you're saying when you're saying okay everybody get ready to turn on your DVD players, it's just a little bit too much pressure. I remember thinking, oh shit, oh it's not coming on. I didn't, you know, and suddenly you're out of time with everyone else, and so I I didn't enjoy that. I I I think I kind of broke one of the things that Twitter is good for, where things should just really happen. Yeah, and that's that's what I think doesn't work with trying to make 
what we call the second screen when you're watching TV and you're using Twitter like with the Eurovision Song Contest. Yeah, do, contest do you know what they do in, in, in the UK? I don't know if they do this here, but on scripted TV shows, there's a new comedy on ITV, I noticed, and they put the hashtag of the, the name of the show on the show as you're watching it. And it's really a, a slap in the face for me. It's a slap in the face, not just for the makers of the program, who want you to concentrate, but also for the, for the audience who they think are so stupid, they need to be told what the hashtag for a program, for the program is, you know? It's, it's, uh, it's annoying on, it, on many levels. Yeah, but that's, that's the way it doesn't work. Just as you said with yeah, the DVD. Exactly. They try to force, force people to, to use it, it doesn't work. But, mm. but mm. you are a second screen person, so you're watching a, a sports game or whatever. That's the thing, I don't really watch. I don't, I'm not a big sports fan. I'm not really interested in many live events generally. Um, I wouldn't say I'm a second screen person. I turn off one of the screens usually so I can concentrate on one, you know? And it's bad. I shouldn't say that. I should be, you know, um, cheering on television. As, but, you know, it, the choice between program tele, televised events and, and being able to control it yourself is, you know, why would you, why would you just sit down waiting for... I, I, I love what people, you know, Clay Shirky and, and people like him have pointed out, that for, for, for like, I don't know how many years, it was 20 or 30 years, uh, we all came home at 6 o'clock, maybe you didn't in Germany, I don't know what your TV was like, but, but, but you came home and you turned on the TV and you just sat there for three hours. <laughs> You know, I just find that hilarious that we used to do that. And we used to think it was normal for, for, for three decades, mm -hmm. you know? It's not normal. And that's what, one thing I love about computers is that, is that they suddenly allowed people to, uh, to do so many different things when they got home or, you know, whenever. Oh, and uh, not at home. Are you, do you think there's going to be a time, uh, pr it's now probably a question of money, but do you think there's going to be a time when you produce series for a, an online channel, for YouTube or whatever? Is? I, I don't know. It just seems to be, everything seems to be possible, you know? I, I, um, I, 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 well, let me put it this way. I'm, I'm nice to everybody. <laughs> If I meet someone who, who might be able to put on one of my shows in... Um, you know, 20 years, I, I'm, a, I'm very polite, you know. It's just anything, wasn't, isn't Netflix now just going direct to distribution? Well, we haven't got that here. Not if, you, if you're not has, into having American credit cards and proxies and everything. Yeah, but in the States, I think uh, House of Games, the new Kevin Spacey program was done directly through Netflix, mm -hmm. which is... Just insane, you know? Incredible. Oh, anyway. Well, they probably have the money. Yeah. I'm um, no expert on it, though, sadly. Um, do, you, do you use digital tools to keep your ideas or to write? I mean, apart from using a computer to write, of course, but um, do you keep your ideas in some smartphone or do you yeah. write it down on a piece yeah, of paper? Yeah, no, I use... I, I, you, you very kindly gave me a notebook in my goodie bag Uh, but I know what I'll do is I'll write one page. Can't find it now. I'll write one page and then I'll never write another thing in it. So the internet's been great for that, for note keeping. I use Evernote. Um, uh, I, you know, it's just, it's just amazing. And when I found out about Final Draft, my brain nearly exploded. I couldn't believe there was something that actually formatted scripts. That was, uh, and that's a long time ago, but it was, I, I will never forget the excitement and the happiness when I found out I could do that, you know. So are you writing on anything new uh, regarding... Uh, oh, Atika? yeah, well, I kind of have big news, really. We, we, um, we're, we're doing the IT Crowd special in three weeks. Okay. Um, we just suddenly, I had a script ready to go, um, and suddenly the, everybody became available. So we're doing one last show, one last uh, 40, minute, 40 minute to hour long show where we'll just wrap things up a little bit and just say goodbye to everybody. But uh, there's that and there's... Uh, oh, good, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Exklusiv Meldung. Yeah.
<laughs> good as well. I think it's going to be a good one. It looks funny. I, I read it back, and because I haven't read it for a year, it was like I was reading it anew, and, and I laughed. So I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be all right. Well, let's, let, 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 let's let people laugh about it again, because I've got one more clip, I think, um, which should feature the famous quote, have you tried turning it on and off again? I think so. <laughs> I think it's very interesting um, to show the series with the laughter in it and to listen to when people in the audience are laughing here. And you did that as well. You had a live show with audience. Oh yeah, the, the laughter is real. In fact, the, 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 the first, uh, have you tried turning it off and on again? The, the first audiences we invited all worked in IT. And um, we toned, we had to tone that laugh down because, <laughs> because when, when he said, have you tried turning it off and on again, it was like the Beatles had walked in. <laughs> so, so we had to isolate some laughs on, and, and uh, make it sound a bit thinner. Because when people are at home, they think, well, what's so funny about that? But yeah. It's just very true. I think. And that's oh, good. Well, that, funny. it's kind of accidental. I mean, it's 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 partly we. I did research it, but I'm a lazy researcher, so it was part research, but also uh, guesswork and uh, a lot of wishful thinking. Was there any any people from IT who? Um, I mean, I guess that that you know how how many people love you for the series, but um, has there been any people from the? internet community or IT, whatever, that don't like it and then send you hate mail? Oh, God, I, yeah, absolutely. Not so much IT people, more, more, uh, more comedy fans. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's, comedy is one of those things that gets people heated. So, um, yeah, you know. But it, it eased off after the first few episodes. first few episodes went out. Usually you'll get people hating it no matter what it's like, and then after a while they kind of either relax or they get drowned out by the, by the other voices, by the voices of people who liked it. So, so there's, there's part of, you know, when, when I try not to pay attention to social media when a show goes out, I try and um, avoid reading up on it and I don't look at, uh, I, I try not, I would certainly not do a, 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 a Twitter search for the name of the show. That's just asking for trouble. So I, I try and avoid all that stuff. Because it's hard enough to write. Uh, because you've got your own voices in your head telling you how terrible you are. You don't need to add to them. Yeah. Are, you, are you really so self-insecure, what, what the writing Yeah, concerns? yeah. Well, you know, I mean, the thing about it is that show is the result of a lot of work, a lot of rewriting, um, a lot of rehearsal. And then I sit down on my own, and I start writing, it doesn't look as good as that. It doesn't read as good as that. It reads dreadfully, and usually it is dreadful. Uh, but then, you know, a few, a few weeks later, I'll go back to it, I'll rewrite it, I'll add some more jokes, um, I'll sort out one plot line that doesn't work, I'll throw out a character. Uh, suddenly it's looking a little bit better, but it's still nowhere near the quality of the stuff that's out there. And so, and so every time you do a program, you're going back to this state where you're really doing some terrible work. And you have to kind of keep reminding yourself, it doesn't matter, this will get better. It's, this is not what people will see, you know? So, um, uh, well, you know, one, one time I might release a first draft of a script just to show people how much it changes and how much it improves, you know. They will probably all like it much better than the final <laughs> yeah, version. Probably, probably. Why didn't you film that? So. Um, there was, with the, um, you, said it, you said it before that in the beginning there was more in-jokes and then it, it's gone into a comedy thing about lots of things and you, you made fun with a lot of uh, different people you made. I'm, I'm not saying you made fun of, but no, sure. fun with uh, I mean. gay people the gay musical called Gay, mm -hmm. which was pretty gay. <laughs> um, in that series, there was disabled people uh, in wheelchairs. 
Oh, yeah, I guess, yeah. Um, people with injuries, lonely pe people, people with weird names like pedophile. Yeah. <laughs> it was, anyway, look H it up. Humanity, basically. <laughs> Humanity. <laughs> And also I tend German. to work work on human. I tend to work with humans. That and also Germans. And Germans. There's a German cannibal. Yes. 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 He was based on um, what was the guy's name? Does anyone remember? You'll remember better than me. <laughs> <laughs> what was his name? Wie ist der deutsche Kannibale? That's him. Whoa. That's him. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I remember reading the news story and thinking. Uh, that is the the worst thing I've ever heard. That is the most unpleasant most horrible thing I've ever heard. I wonder if I could make that funny. <laughs> Because it seemed so hard. It seemed like that would be impossible to make funny. I mean, the jury, I think, are still in, in therapy, you know? And I thought, how could you make that funny? That's, um, that's just the worst. And then I met someone and they said, did you know he met a guy before the guy he ate? And I said, no, what happened? And he said, he, he, well, they, he went, he said, you know, he, he did that thing, he put out the ad, and the guy turned up and said, I want you to eat me. And, um, and they said, okay, and he, they sat down, and after a while, he got nervous, and he said, you know what, I've, ch I've changed my mind, I, I, I don't want you to eat me. So he said, okay, and they went and saw Ocean's Eleven instead. <laughs> and when I heard that, I thought, okay, that's funny, that's funny enough to to do. Someone said it's a good thing they saw that George Clooney film and not Solaris, otherwise he would have halfway through have gone, you know what, you can eat me, you can eat me. But, um, but uh, yeah, that was, that was just, I, I, that's, I sometimes like to do that as well, I like to see is there something that's considered so bad that uh, can I break through that and make people laugh at it, you know? I'm going to show I mean, do, 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 I don't know if people know the film Dirty Rotten Scoundrels. Have you ever seen that film? I haven't seen it. Michael Caine and Steve Martin. And um, it's an incredibly funny movie. But, but all it does is uh, it, it allows you to, make, to laugh at, at things that normally you would not be allowed to laugh at. And it does it in such a clever way. And there's also the example that I love to, to cite is uh, Malcolm in the Middle. Um, which has, uh, I hope this translates, but uh, there's a bit where Malcolm's father um, is speaking to the 10-year-old son, Dewey, and he says to him, uh, what's wrong, you look a bit down. And the son says, ah, oh, there's a girl at school and she doesn't like me. And uh, he says, what, how could someone not like you? You're wonderful, you're a, w you're a wonderful boy, you know. Yeah, she won't, I like her, but she, you know, she won't give me the time of day. And the father says, I'll speak to her. I'll speak to her, don't worry, don't worry. And then it cuts to a little girl walking along like this with her books and the father in the car saying, get in the car, get in the car. And he goes, I have sweets, you know. And I thought, this is a show that's on at like 6 p.m. And they've taken the, mo the most awful thing you can imagine and they've made it so that everybody can laugh at it. And I think that that is um, a real achievement. And sometimes when we're, when we're talking earlier about restrictions and so on, that's my favorite kind, is how can I get something that's very, very tasteless and, and trick people into laughing at it and trick people into not being offended? Well, I think you succeed. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'd like to open the mics for people to you know, speak to you, okay. ask you questions. But before, there's one more short clip, <laughs> um, which is German again, because I think it actually works very well in German because there's a guy with a French accent. Okay. And uh, support. Uh, which one is that? I think that's this one. Und danach könnt ihr gerne, ich weiß gar nicht, wo das Mikro hier steht, aber vielleicht schon mal, ja, also wir haben ein Mikro, was wir dann zu euch tragen. Wenn ihr Fragen stellen wollt. Genug geguckt, den Rest müsst ihr euch selber drum kümmern. Ähm, ich würde gerne das Mikro noch für 10, 12, 13 Minuten aufmachen. Ähm, I'd like to open the mic.
for questions to you. They don't have to be about IT crowd. So if you have questions about, I'm just saying that no, no, I for black books, anything, um, Little Britain sketches. Keine Fragen. Doch. Thanks. Okay. Hello, Graham. Hello. Happy May Bank Holiday. Thank you. Um, obviously, you are very well known for um, live audience filming. Do you think in like this community age, parks and recreation, the office, etc., do you think there'd be much resistance um, if you were to create a new program for the live audience? Um, <coughs> how do you, how, a new what for the live audience? Do you think there'd be much resistance from like networks, from the Channel 4s, the BBCs? No, um, they, I, think they always, I think they always get good figures when they're good. The uh, studio audience shows tend to do well. Um, it's, when they, it's when they're bad that they tend to, they tend to just uh, embarrass the rest of us, you know? Um, the, I'm doing a new show that's on in um, June, June, 5th, or June, middle of June, um, called Count Arthur Strong, and, uh, and, th and that has a live audience, and, you know, everyone seems to like it, you know? I, I, I don't want to work exclusively in it, though. I, 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 um, I, I like the naturalistic way of doing things as well. It's just that I haven't had an idea that suited that for a while now. Everything I've done, <coughs> you know, I don't think IT Crowd would work as a naturalistic uh, sitcom. Uh, I think Douglas would stand out for a start. Um, but... Uh, you know, if I have an idea that suits single camera, then I'm, I'll certainly do that. It's something I've always liked. You know, The Office and stuff, and Larry Sanders. I love all that stuff. Uh, here vorne war noch eine Frage. Hi, Graham. Sorry. Hi. Uh, great fan. Uh, one okay. question. Could you think about... Uh, Having black books made again uh, in, in our time now with having ebooks and all the stuff, could you think about the little book of calm as an ebook? Yeah. Any sketch with that? Harder to swallow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Could be. <laughs> no, no, no. That, that's not an actual question. But, oh, sorry. Uh, okay. Uh, having this uh, whole electronic thingy uh, going on with no books, no, no uh, stuff to, to feel, just uh, the, the digital stuff. Could you think uh, working uh, of working with that at all? So making a series about Twitter, people talking on Twitter. No, well, that's that's what the IT crowd was supposed to be. The IT, the well, it kind of was. I think the IT crowd even happened before Facebook was was. It happened while Facebook was still a kind of novelty. In fact, there's an episode in the first series that's about Facebook. That's kind of embarrassing for me to look at now. But, um, but one thing we realized quite quickly when we did IT Crowd was that people looking at screens is boring. And um, it's very hard to turn that into dramatic situations. Um, uh, so, so, yeah, so, so that's another reason why the second series, as I say, I didn't do as many jokes about computers and so on because I didn't really want it to be about how they were interacting with the computers I wanted it to be about how they were interacting with everybody at the workplace. So um, there might be a sitcom in Twitter and in social networking, but I don't know what it is yet. You know, it, something like a place like this is probably great for, but unfortunately only yearly, so a bit hard to make a sitcom about it. I guess you could do a sitcom spent. I guess you could do a sitcom spent at six days of a conference like this, spread out over six weeks. That might work. That might work. Actually, I think you got enough ideas when you spend one day here for jokes. Yeah. Because, yeah, I think so. Any more questions? No. I just completely satisfied you. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Do you have any more questions, Graham? Me? No, no, not at all. Anything I should see over the next few days? Okay. I have a pass. <laughs> it's just something big I should come to and use my past to see. 
You're very welcome. <laughs> thanks for being here. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for coming to Republika. And thanks to you for listening to us. Thank you. Thank you. Graham Lennon.